Hey everybody, today I'm going to teach you how to play a classic Italian card game named Scopa. If you go to Italy and you go into the, go to the park or to the main plaza, you'll definitely see old men playing this game. But it's not just an old man's game, everybody in Italy plays it. If you're going to be hanging out with Italians, it's really good to learn how to play this game. So, this is how it's played. It's usually played with four people, but you can also play it with two, and I'll show you how. First, let's get familiar with the cards that we'll be using. As you can see, they have a different, they have different suits and different artwork. They're not just poker cards. But if you don't have these cards, you can also play them with poker cards, and I'll show you how to do that. But it's a good idea if you want to play it authentically to get on Amazon and look for Scopa cards and order them, unless you want to plan a trip to Italy to buy some. So as you can see, there are basically two categories of the artwork. There's the northern cards and southern cards. What I mean by different categories are really just, it's really just the artwork because the, the cards are the same, they have the same value. You can play this game with any set of cards that you get. It's just that each region of Italy has its own style of doing the artwork and the, the styles are similar based on whether they're in a northern region or a southern region. So, as you can see, there are four suits, just like poker cards, but in, for these ones, the suits are swords, cups, coins, or gold, and clubs. For this video, I'm going to be using the Sicilian, uh, the Sicilian style, just because they're my favorite and because I think it's probably the, one of the easier ones to recognize for people that are new to the game. Some of the other ones can be a little bit ornate, and, it's, and it can be kind of hard to identify what each card is because of the artwork. So here you can see the cards. There's 10 in total. I'm sorry, there's 10 of each suit, 40 in total. As you can see, unlike poker cards, they go one all the way to seven, and then woman, horse, and king. The woman is worth eight. And in, by the way, in some styles, that woman is a soldier, so it'd be a soldier, horse, king. In the Sicilian style, it's woman, horse, king. So the woman's worth eight, horse is worth nine, and king is worth 10. There you go. And so if you were to play this game with just regular poker cards, all you'd have to do is take out the eights and the nines and just have jack, queen, king become eight, nine, 10. And then the other thing you'd have to do is decide which suit is going to be coins because the coins have a special purpose in this game. I would suggest probably diamonds because it makes sense. So basically, if you're playing with four people, you sit across from your teammate and then you go around. So you're, you're taking turns alternating which team has a player going. And I'm gonna, we're going to show you now how we're going to play a little match right now just to show you how it's played. And then we'll explain a little bit more of the rules after we're done. Okay, we're ready to play. These cards are stiffer than poker cards, so you can shuffle them just by kind of shoving them in. Uh, you can't really bridge them because they're because they're too stiff. So we're only playing with two people, so we're sitting across from each other. We start out by putting four cards face up in the middle of the table. Here we have the King of Cups, Five of Swords, Four of uh, Staffs, the Clubs. There you go, and Three of Coins. And we give three cards face down to each player. So these are my these are my cards. They're not really mine until, uh, if when they're in my hand, they're not really mine. They're not mine until I put them right here. And I'll show you how I do that. So here, um, since I started, well, since I served, she goes first. That is the horse of clubs. It's worth nine. So she's getting the five plus the four, which is nine. And she takes that. And now those are her cards. I have this three of swords. I'm going to use it to take the three of coins because they're the same value. So you use a card from your hand to take things of the same value on the table. She didn't have a king, which is worth 10. So she had to place something down. I don't have anything in my hand that I can use to take either a king or a one of clubs, so I'm going to put down this five. She has to put down the woman because she doesn't have anything to take, 
and I have to put down this seven. I almost could take that because it's five and one, that makes six, but this is a seven, so I couldn't take it. Once your three cards are out, you deal another three. This is all still part of the same round. And she still goes first. She has a horse, which is worth nine. So she's gonna take the woman, which is worth eight, and the ace of clubs, which is worth one. There you go. I have this seven of swords, so I'm gonna take the seven of clubs, which is awesome because sevens are very valuable in this game, as you'll see. Anytime you see a seven, you wanna go for it. There you go, she has uh, the king, so she's taking the king. And I don't have a five, so I, all, I, all I can do is, here, I have a choice. I can put down a two or a one. I'm gonna put down the one just because five and two make seven. And I don't want her to be able to get a seven because sevens are very valuable, so I'm gonna put down the one. And she has a woman, so I'm gonna put this down. And we're gonna serve more. She's taking the five with a five, perfect. And I am taking a two with a two. I have a choice, see how I have two twos? But I'm gonna use the one that's coins because coins are worth more, as you'll see when we count all the points. Horse, okay. This is why the game is called Scopa. Scopa in Italian means broom. She's sweeping the table. She's cleaning it off, taking every last card. That's a Scopa. When she does that, everyone yells, Scopa! And she gets an extra point for that, as you'll see. So she turned one card over like that to indicate that she got a Scopa so that we can remember that when we're counting points at the end. Now, this is kind of a stressful situation here because I only have two cards, and no matter what I put down, she might be able to get another Scopa if she has the same card. So I'm gonna put down this two, and I'm gonna really hope that she doesn't have another two. Which she doesn't, perfect. Now, I I can't just put down this six because there's a six to take. I have to take that six. So I'm risking that she'll be able to get another Scopa at the end. That's why the strategy is if you can't take anything and you have to leave something, you wanna try and leave it above a total of 10 on the table. Because if it's under 10, they could get a Scopa. But if it's over 10, there's no way to do it. See, so she just got another Sklova! <laughs> That's two extra points for her, amazing. That really sucks. All right, let's try. <laughs> Here's a four. Three, ooh, perfect. If I had a seven, I could get a Sklova and a seven out of it, but I don't, so I have to leave this. Six. Ooh, she got the seven. All right. Hmm. So here's here's a dilemma. I have, this is a six and a four, together make 10. I have a 10. I could take it if I want to, but that would leave the five alone, which means that she might be able to get another Scopa, and I don't wanna risk that. So instead of taking that, I'm gonna leave a woman. The reason why I didn't leave this one is because this plus that equals seven, and I don't want her to be able to get a seven either. So it's better to leave the woman, that way it's safe. She has a horse, five plus four is nine. There you go. And now I can leave my 10 safely. Sete bello, ooh, I'm so glad I didn't leave this now. Cause she would have been able to use that sete bello to get that seven. Last hand of this round.
Okay. Man, I really want that that setabello, but I can't get it. These are three. Now here's the thing. If if let's say that there was a four here and I could get it with this ten, but if there's a king, I have to take the matching card. I can't choose. So I'm going to use this king to take that king. And I have a six. Now here's the thing. Last person to take something at the end of the round gets everything. That doesn't count as a scopa, that's just the remaining cards go to the last person to take. And by the way, if it was like that and I were to take it with the last card, it still doesn't count as a scopa if you clean the table with the last card. Just because it's pretty easy to do and it's pretty common, so it doesn't count as a scopa. There you go. Okay, so now that we're done with our first round, we're going to be counting our points. There are five different points that you can get in Scopa. The first way you can score a point is whoever finishes the round with the most cards gets a point. So this means that if you have a choice between getting one card and two, you usually want to get two cards, right? If you if you can get if you have a 10 and you can get a 6 and a 4, that's more valuable than getting just a 10 because you you need to finish the round with as many cards as possible. Second point is whoever finishes the round with the most coin cards. That doesn't mean the amount of coins that are drawn on the card. That means the amount of cards that are of the suit of coins. And there are 10 in total, so whoever gets more than 5 would win that point. Point number 3, whoever finishes the round with the sette bello. Sette bello means the beautiful 7, which is the 7 of coins. It's the most valuable card in the game, and it's worth 1 point on its own. So usually you do anything possible to get that card. The last one is called the Primera, or 7-off in English, which I will show you how to do, the, how to count this, because it can get kind of complicated, but don't worry about it, it's not that hard. And in addition, every Scopa you get, which means sweeping the table, is an extra point. And so you count all your, all your points for that round, draw them on a piece of paper, and then you play another round, and another round, and another round, until one of you gets the 21 points, and that's the winner. Now we're going to count our cards. Now we're going to count the points. First point is number of cards. So I'm going to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I know that there are 40 cards total. And I have 17, which means she has more than me, so she gets the first point. So she gets the first point for the number of cards. Second, number of coins. I have one coin, two coins, three coins, four coins, I only have four cards of the coin suit, and there are ten total, which means that she got that too. She got coins. Third point is the sette bello. Oh, she wants to count her scopa. So her scope, she got two scope, so that's two extra points. Go ahead. Nice. Next is the sette bello, which we know I got right there. That's worth a point in and of itself. So I got one point. Now, the last thing is called the primera, or in English some people call it the seven off. You can call it whatever you want. This is pretty much where you compare the highest um, number of each suit that each one of you have, and then you compare the second highest and the third highest, etc. So the highest uh, point, the highest uh, card is seven. So here we go. We're going to throw out the sevens we have of each suit. Now I already won because I have three sevens and she has one. So I won this. But let's pretend like this was hers. Let's pretend like she had the seven of, of clubs. And it's not sure, it's tied, then we go to sixes. So let's throw out, so I throw out my highest uh, 
club and my highest cup, and she throws out her highest coin and her highest sword. So for now, my highest cup is a six, which is great. And highest club is a six. Look at that. Her highest sword is a five, and her highest coin is a five. So I won. If she had these two as sixes, then we would go on to aces, and then five, four, three, two, one, etc. Until you figure out who has the highest uh, value cards. That's called the primera. And I won that one. There you go. So for this round, we are four to two. As you can see, there's always going to be four points that are scored, guaranteed, in addition, any other scope that you get are extra points. But there's at least four points that are going to be distributed every round. And if if you get an even number of cards, if, if you each have half the cards, no one gets that point. If you each have half the gold, no one gets that point. And if you get a scopa with the, if you clean the table with the very last card, it doesn't count as a scopa. Once you've mastered that form of scopa, there's another form that you can play called scopone scientifico, which is where you start the game just like the regular scopa with four cards in the middle, face up, and then instead of three at a time, you distribute all of the remaining cards among all the players. So just like in this photo where they have a huge hand, not just three cards, but all the all the cards at once. This one's interesting because basically you use what's in your hand to try and guess what you think your opponents have just based on what you don't have. It can be, it's really fun and it's called scopone because you get a lot of scopas in this one. Just constantly. Someone's putting something down and it's probable that the other one can get a scopa immediately. And so this, this one gets pretty chaotic. It's a lot of fun. Anyways, I hope that this video has been informative. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. Buon divertimento. Have fun, everybody.